Denver's rush hour isn't easy, but be thankful that you aren't swerving around torpedoes in the road like people were 35 years ago this week. Real live explosives at I-25 and I-70. Our reporter on the story in 1984 was Rick Salinger. Our reporter on the story tonight is Mark Salinger. It couldn't have happened at a worse place or at a worse time. The truck skidded 75 feet overturning as it came south on I-25 turning east onto I-70. It was one of the worst commutes in the history of Denver. There were six World War II style torpedoes on board the truck. Three of the containers were damaged. One was leaking a fluid. Highways shut down, neighborhoods evacuated, and torpedoes headed for a submarine base in Connecticut lay bruised along the busiest highways in the city. So if the fuel had ignited, the uh, torpedoes could have uh, exploded. It took four hours for crews to arrive and evaluate the scene. And so all they could do was wait. Wait for the teams from Fort Carson to arrive to determine just how serious the situation really was. They determined it was safe to load the torpedoes back into the truck. No explosion. A generation later, that crash still impacts how hazardous materials are transported throughout the country. What were you thinking when you first heard it? And uh, and it was like, like, oh my goodness, this is this is huge. Tony Massaro was Denver's director of environmental affairs on that morning in August of 1984. Quite memorable. After the crash, the state legislature passed bills requiring truckers to take routes around the city when transporting dangerous materials. The goal of those was to to minimize the risk to um, large population of people. The truck bearing the torpedoes was moved out. Seven hours of gridlock, fear and uncertainty ended with a motorcade through Denver. It was accompanied by an ambulance and fire truck. The destination, the Rocky Mountain Arsenal. Three decades later, the torpedoes that had brought Denver a rush hour mess and a scare. It's still the type of story you'd tell your kids. For next, Rick Salinger, 9 News. I'm Mark Salinger. Love that story. Tony Massaro from the city says that thinking back on that day, it was the scariest of his career. He says he cannot even imagine how many people could have been lost if those, tor if those torpedoes exploded?